Hello again. It is Voyaside. I am standing today, and you are just going to have to make your peace with that. Uh, if you know me, you know how much I fucking hate computers. Uh, I was going to do a video on songwriting primarily using a, a DAW, but I cannot figure out how to fuck... So instead, what I'm going to do today is a, a very general introduction to drum sampling and drum programming. Um, so this is the DAW that I use. It's a Studio One. Um, you'll see right here, I have three different tracks loaded up, <laughs> drums, toms, and cymbals. So when I'm demoing, uh, this is how I start out if I don't just do a single track. Uh, I've been using Drumforge uh, lately for most of my stuff. Uh, I just, I don't know, think it sounds pretty good. So I've got two kicks blended and two snares blended. Uh, for toms, I like uh, the Native Instruments Session Studio Drummer thing. Uh, Oh, it's usually session kit, whatever, it doesn't matter. I like the toms in this. Uh, and then for cymbals, I've been using drum forge, so sometimes I'll use the native instruments. Um, so the thing is, uh, I program everything directly onto a MIDI grid, um, which seems to kind of, I don't know, confuse some people. Okay, so what I have here is a very basic drum groove. One of the biggest things with programming drums is, you know, I'll get like, my guitarist got Easy Drummer and it sounded like crap. Sample drums just sound robotic. And the thing is, yeah. Uh, look, I'm I'm so tired. I just don't fucking sleep anymore, and when I do, my fiance just wakes me up. Listen, whenever you're putting drums into the computer, you need to be thinking about velocity. You need to be thinking about how a drummer is going to drum this. Uh, the biggest the biggest offenses are usually toms. They sound just super brutal and robotic, and like, you should always have velocity pulled up. And the biggest thing to keep in mind is like, drummers favor their dominant hand. Most drummers are right-handed. So in a fill like this, they're gonna hammer that first one like every time. And chances are the left hand is probably gonna be a bit weaker. And a consistent fill is gonna sound more like this. It doesn't look nice. And, you know, it would be nice if drummers had perfect robotic timing, but they don't. <laughs> um, similar things with kicks. Like, uh, humanization makes it sound a little better, but, like, okay. Drummers always hammer, hammer the downbeat. Um, snares can come up a bit. And then usually doubles are weaker. So if there's, like, two in a row, right, it's going to sound weaker. Um, Um, I'm also gonna add a nice little uh, metalcore triplet here. Um, to pass. So, with the feet, that's right, left, right. Um, now, it is building into that snare hit, so you would hope that it would be phrased like upwards. But it kind of depends on the drummer, because a lot of them would probably hammer that first one a lot more, and it would look something like that. That sounds a lot more natural. Um, if we phrased it the way, you know, you'd want it to be, it would sound like this. Which is also fine. Uh, I feel like a real drummer would do this. Um, and that sounds super nice. It sounds a lot better. 
Um, just like general rules like that, that if there's like two quick hits in succession, unless the phrasing is that the second one gets hammered, chances are the second one's gonna be weaker. Overheads, like symbols, I find a lot more finicky. I find overly humanizing them actually sounds worse. I like to give my fake drummer the benefit of the, benefit of the doubt, the like, he can play it pretty consistently. I don't know, I find humanizing overheads is a lot more like, I kind of only do it if it sounds weird. Um, cause keep in mind, most sampling programs will have built in humanization. And if they don't, you will be able to tell, um, it sounds like garbage. The interesting thing with drum forge is it's not like, so for, yeah, this is basically, you've got like four, four samples, which I believe it just cycles through. Um, I do like contact because the humanization options are a lot more robust, um, this is usually what I like to keep it. Um, I really like the time one a lot. I don't like when it's messy on the grid, but just making the time a little bit off on the toms makes it sound so much more realistic. So the thing is the same goes for symbols. They will be a little bit humanized and I don't tend to touch them too much other than obviously like shaping the general curve of how hard you want them to be played. Uh, I don't super like how that sounds either. Just to contradict myself, uh, this fill feels like it's being phrased to kind of push into the next, you know, if this loop. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and go against my own advice and uh, actually phrase it kind of the opposite. Um, I think that sounds better. Bruh, chill, chill. I'm sorry, you're getting ejected. Okay, so let's just take the example of a 16th note snare roll. Um, and give it a few different uses. So, say this is a buildup. We're being, we're using it to ramp it up. Uh, the easiest thing would just be to do this and just draw a line, which actually doesn't sound bad with a kick. Um, the easiest way to take that and make it a little more natural would be first of all to make the velocity curve. Whoops. A little more like that, like drummers, you know, they get really excited, get really excited by the end. Um, but then also, both a phrasing thing and a control thing. So once again, you just want those downbeats. Get, you know what, that was a bad decision. Um, you kind of want those downbeats emphasized. Um, once again, left hand is weaker, so I tend to bring it down a bit. We'll see how that sounds, though. It's a little better. The end is, like, pretty aggressive. But already, that very much serves the purpose a little better. The other thing is basically just something that has, like, a continuous pattern. So this is more along the lines of like a fill and it's way too long to be a fill. Um, but just as an example, you can see how much variation is, you know, between these two parts. But like, you know, a drummer who has control will be able to do that or even more so. Um, the biggest thing in accented rolls like that, it isn't hammering the loud parts. It's bringing down the really quiet parts. It's 
super important. So like, don't be afraid of that like variation in the velocities. But like that definitely grooves and it sounds a bajillion times better than that. Um, which is, I feel like what a lot of people who are programming drums tend to do, whether they realize it or not, um, is like this super crazy, like, all right, well, we want it to be metal, right? So like, we're just gonna make sure the velocity is cranked. I present to you the sampled metal drum beat. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've, like, heard that in actual records by people who obviously don't know how to sample drums. So here's the thing, and I might even put this at the start of the video. Um, there seems to be a lot of misconceptions about what sampled drums actually are. And, like, sure, you can say they're fake drums, um, especially in metal, people really like to say or think that they're fake drums and then it's a robot drumming or whatever. But like, you know, this might sound super basic, but like, you know, what it is, is like a recording studio and they set up a drum set and they get somebody to just hit a kick and they record it over and over. You can see with this kick, they had like this many mics. D6, D, I don't know what that one is. Rezo, which would be this. Usually it's a kick in, a kick out, like one that sounds really clicky and then one that sounds really boomy. Um, I assume these are mid-room mics and then overhead and rooms, right? Those were all real mics that they used to record a real drum set in a real room, in a real recording studio. Um, the only difference is they didn't make it into a song, they made it into like this software. Um, of course, how you use it has a pretty big effect on your music. A lot of bands will just augment their real kit with samples, just layer them over top. Um, some will replace them entirely. Honestly, I think a lot more records than you would like to think just use the samples exclusively because it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper. Um, but that's all sampling is. It's not some kind of black magic wizardry that's, you know, killing drummers and, you know, just making drum kits into robots. Like, it is real, real drum kits, really nice drum kits, <laughs> uh, recorded in really nice recording studios, um, you know, and the end product is there for anybody to use because it's super affordable and it's making, like, really nice drum sounds more accessible. Uh, you know, do I wish that I could set up a big ass kit in a nice sounding room and record drums for everything? Like, yeah, totally. If I had the option, I would. Um, but unfortunately, I do not have that kind of space, nor do I have the money for a drum set that doesn't sound like garbage. Um, and I used to, honestly. Uh, a lot of the older records, right up until uh, Soliloquy, um, I did insist on renting out drum space, uh, and, you know, all real, all real everything. I was like, just insisted that I had every, all the drums needed to be real. And there's a point where it's like, that's not financially responsible, and honestly, people don't know the difference <laughs> like I don't know uh people can't really even hear the difference so like it shouldn't matter I don't think sampling is like a a plague on humanity I think it's a good <laughs> way to bring nice good sounding drums to people who otherwise don't have the means to use them and like it puts more music in the world because more people have access to good sounding stuff. I don't know why that's a bad thing. Um, 
lastly, uh, it used to be when I programmed drums, I would just do it all on one track, on one kit. Um, the reason that I do it like this is just purely because it sounds better. Like I can compress the kick and the snare together in a way that's nice. Um, without squishing the shit out of the overheads. Um, and I just like that. It just means that, like, the right off the bat, the demo of the mix sounds a little nicer. Uh, I don't mind skipping between tracks. I sort of do a little bit now that Studio One does weird shit where I, like, try to switch tracks and it doesn't let me. Um, but, you know, I guess I'll give you a few uh, advanced advanced hacks um so some other things that i do uh i will bring in uh i'm so tired please send help uh i will bring in an instance of whoa i recently switched hard drives and now everything's broken so that's fun today's going great this is the third time i've tried recording this video i'm so tired please send help I will use a second instance of a different sample kit to layer in. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. And for some reason, it sounds better when you take all the low end out. Don't know why. Um, but like... just adds shine obviously you process it more than that but it just kind of adds shine um and then super fancy shit that i've been doing lately so i'll obviously i'll divide these into kick and snare later on um because i like processing them individually this is the advanced part of the video if i'm losing you just it's okay the the um the introductory part is done now now we're getting into clutch plays. Um, so kick and snare will be, I know there's still a snare loaded, I don't care that much. Um, I will take out the room mics and the overheads. So I'll treat this like it's just a kick mic. Um, same with these. I'm still not super familiar with drum forge, not gonna lie. Um, And then in another instance of Drum Forge. Oh my god. Bruh. I will load up, you know, ideally the same ones, but I don't remember what they are and I'm not gonna check. Um, and then turn down these. So they're just rooms, right? Um, so if that makes sense to you, and then you pull down this and this and copy them if you don't know how to do that that's just daw stuff um so this is effectively a room mic which you can then sort of just blend in with your mix which is cool because it's like it's a real drum set uh, a few more layers of stuff like that is kind of how I've been getting the drum sounds that I've been doing lately. Uh, additionally, I will kind of spot add specific overheads if I think that they don't cut through enough. Like say you've got like a, you know, tick ting something on the bell or like a cool like splash fill or something and it just doesn't cut through. I'll load up a different cymbal set and really just hammer them and then layer it in. Um, I can't show you because my libraries are broken because I wasn't prepared for this video. That's something I'll do, and then if I'm feeling really advanced, I'll do what I just showed you with the room mics on the symbols, so that I have close symbols and room symbols. Um, all those together, and it pretty quickly adds up to as many mics as you would have on a real drum kit. I don't get as far as doing kick in and kick out, or snare top, snare bottom, I don't care. Like, honestly, I sort of hate all snare sounds all the time. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um... But like, you know, you do this and you play around with signal chains. I know a bunch of these like just loaded up default signal chains. Um, maybe I can get into that in a future video. But like, I don't know, like you're pretty close to having a nice 
decent sounding kit. You, like, <laughs> samples already sound good. It's just people gotta, gotta know how to use them. Uh, okay, one last thing I'll say about velocities is if you're gonna build this fake room mic thing like I do, make sure your velocities on your main kick and snare and your rooms line up. However, uh, this one, which I usually label support, it's like your brightness layer. That sometimes, fuck, sounds better if the velocities are all uniform. My logic behind this is like, if this was a real drum kit, then most of the mics are, you know, they're humanized. They're like imperfection, imperfect human playing. And this layer is like you're adding the sample layer to real drums, if that makes sense. So like, sometimes it sounds good to have the velocities just cranked. I like using Superior Drummer for this because their kicks are really clicky and everything sounds really processed already. Nice layer of Superior Drummer with all the low end rolled off and just like uniform. It just adds a nice, brightness to it um this is the method i'm using for the new design abstract it's the you know pretty soon uh, acolytes of entropy will be out this is this and more is what i used for acolytes i went really hard on acolytes but um i've had good results with this sort of method um hopefully that helps uh i was gonna say i'm gonna sleep i'm not gonna sleep Uh, I think one of the key things is, okay, so you add, uh, your sub bus, or whatever, right, so it's all one thing, um, is, like, not over-compressing the shit out of it, <laughs> that's something I'm just learning.